Welcome back to the 604 Garage. Today we're going to look at some of the vintage tools I have in my garage that I still use. Well, the first of the antique and vintage tools that I want to go through are these Crestaloy 72-7 end nippers. These are seven inches long. And while I was trying to research sort of the manufacturing date on these, I came across some interesting information on the Crescent Tool Company. So in 1930, the Crescent Tool Company was founded and they introduced a line of alloy steel pliers and wrenches under the Crestaloy brand, which these are here. So Crestaloy was registered as a trademark in product categories and both had finished tools and alloy tools. These particular ones are stamped Crescent Tool Company and Jamestown, New York on the front. And maybe we can see that there along with the 72.7 uh, item number or part number and Crestaloy and Made in USA on the back. So these go back to roughly 1935 and that's what I could find. If anyone out there knows the exact manufacturing date, I think it would be interesting, but these are real cool, a real high quality set of end nippers, and I still use them once in a while. All right, and the next interesting and vintage hand tool I have are these Duro Metal Products 2116 8 inch long battery pliers. So for years I had these lying around, I used them once in a while, but I always wondered why the jaws never come together when they're fully closed. Well, if you look at the shape of the jaw here, and I'll move the tool in a second, these are actually for battery terminals. These are battery pliers. Um, so the Duro company made automotive tools, sockets, etc., and they were really prominent in the 40s and 50s. These pliers, from what I could research, are likely manufactured in around 1942 to 1945. And as you can see, these are fully closed, and there's still a gap, but this is when opened, they fit a battery terminal very, very well. They've got that perfect sort of rectangular square there. So interesting tool. Have I ever used it for its intended purpose? Not yet, but you know what? Going forward, having top mount uh, batteries in my old car, I'm going to use these for their purpose. So I still um, have these. I still think these are pretty cool. And I've never seen anything like this um, outside of my own toolbox. So I don't see people using these on, on a regular basis. Maybe an automotive shop would use something like this, a modern example, but here you go. Duro Metal Products 2116 battery terminal pliers. All right, another vintage and basically antique from what I could find tool that I still use are these PNC Tool Company Model 1330 snips. So I use these for cutting tin and thin uh, sheet metal, etc. Um, and while I was going through trying to find an exact manufacturing date, I kind of found a little bit about the Peterson and Carlberg Company or PNC Tool Company. They were founded in 1920 and they ran until about 1960. So your guess is as good as mine as how old these are. I'm going to say these are probably in the 50s from what I could gather. But again, another tool that I've had for many years, probably most likely passed down through my father from my grandfather. And, uh, Again, I still use these guys. These guys are very high quality. You sharpen them up and they will cut very, very well. All right, another interesting tool is this flathead screwdriver. This is from Master Mechanics and this is the number nine flathead screwdriver. Um, these are really cool as they used to come uh, in some toolkits, I believe that you bought with old vehicles. So some came with automotive car logos from the manufacturer that they were um, supplied with like Ford. And I have a picture of one right here. So if anyone knows the rough manufacturing date on this, please let me know. Uh, but this is the Master Mechanics number nine long flathead screwdriver, which is a real cool piece. And I use this still to this day um, and has never let me down. Okay, and the next group of tooling I'm gonna to show you are some of my power tools, and these were handed down to me by my grandfather, who was a carpenter, and he made his living with these tools and used them every single day, and they still work. So this is a Black & Decker utility saw or skill saw. 
number 7301 and from my research i found that this was probably made in the very early 1970s if anybody else out there is into old vintage tools and knows the manufacturing date of this please drop a comment and let me know i'd love to know and uh, again this is my only skill saw i use it all the time it has never let me down of course you know the cord itself The cord itself could use a little help, but here you go, 7301 Utility Skill Saw. Um, this thing, not as accurate maybe as some of the newer saws, but it works fantastic. So why replace it if it works? I may retire it and I may want to restore it, but definitely is always going to be part of my tool collection. All right, the next up is what I believe to be the Black & Decker 5703 Jigsaw. Now this also looks like it could be the 7545 slash 7546, but I think it's the 5703 because all the pics I've seen of the 7545, 7546 is that they have an orange cord and those are three speed. This one I believe is a single speed. I mean, when you pull the trigger, there's one speed only. Also some of the things that I think may allude to being the older model is the screws or the fasteners that hold the bit in so if we zoom in here you can see they have a flathead screw um, they're not a hex head or a allen head so exactly what is this if anybody could tell me i'd love to know i don't actively use this anymore um, this one actually has been retired and uh, i'd love to restore it i think it's a real cool looking jigsaw the way the handle flows the shape of everything I, they just don't make stuff like this so i'd love to take this apart clean it out restore it repaint it and then put it somewhere um, as a display piece so if you know what it is let me know please all right the next tool to look at another black and decker power tool is the 7515 jigsaw now i still used this exclusively up until about two weeks ago where i replaced it with another corded black and decker jigsaw and the reason why is because well this thing you know from my uh, uh research was probably manufactured in around 1971 or at least this model came out in 1971 um, and I love this jigsaw so another Black & Decker corded jigsaw will only be the thing that replaces it. Um, the only reason why I retired it really is not because of the performance was because of the handle. The handle will get so hot when cutting it or using it for long periods of time that you could barely hold on to it. So after being overheated basically so many times this jigsaw never let me down and it's gonna get put away retired and hopefully one day restored along with the other jigsaws and the other black and decker tools that i have so the black and decker 7515 what an awesome little jigsaw all right so now kind of switching to power drills here or hand drills here this is sort of a mystery to me and I've tried to research it so I'm hoping for some help here. Uh, this little drill is the Black & Decker Extra Heavy Duty Hole Gun. It's a reversing drill. I think it's the 1180-09 part number and I think this is from the 1980s. This thing, very, very durable, still works. I still use it once in a while. Um, and if I could find out the manufacturing date and a little more information, it'd be great. But, you know, looking through photos of things online, it makes things tough. So if anybody knows the manufacturing date or even knows where a good source of information is on Black & Decker tools, uh, please throw a comment down below. I'd love to know because these old tools just, uh, they're really cool to me. All right, and the final power tool from Black & Decker is the 7127-04 chuck variable speed reversing drill. Now I found a catalog listing these as brand new way back to 1978. Maybe, you know, they were manufactured a little earlier than that. I think they were manufactured well into the 80s. Arguably the most used hand drill in America and maybe one of the most manufactured part numbers for a variable speed drill, but uh, what an awesome drill. And many of you will still have these today and many of you will remember using them, but the Black & Decker 7127 is probably the staple of most people's shops in terms of hand drills. All right, well, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope you enjoyed looking at some of the vintage tools I have in my garage that I still use and that probably some of you have as well. 
So if you know, again, the manufacturing date and a little bit more history on some of these tools, please comment below because I'd love to know more. Just like old cars, I love old tools. And I know a lot of you do too. Take care and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.